Kadar sat in the small stone chamber, tapping his foot nervously. The young man's face was drawn, and the dark circles around his eyes suggested he hadn't been sleeping much of late. Fresh scorch marks ran along the walls, and the air smelled of char. He'd been waiting there for three days, eating meals slid through a hole in the wall, and drinking herb water that made him sluggish. He couldn't tell if the herbs made the fire in his veins better or worse. When the door opened, Kadar shot to his feet fast enough that he nearly knocked his chair over. A woman he'd never seen before stood in the doorway, her hair and eyes both the deep red of fresh blood. Power radiated from her skin like heat from a baking brick, and the silk of many colors she wore slid and shushed, more like a fine oil than a fabric. A golden arch glimmered on her breast, but Kadar hardly needed to see it to know who she was. His village's summons had been answered. Kadar, she said, nodding to him as if she'd known him for years. Yes, ma'am, he said, bobbing his head. He swallowed hard and felt the skin on the back of his neck go taut. Clammy sweat beaded in the hollows of his temples and then rapidly evaporated. His stomach went sick. Kadar felt it coming up again, and he knew he had to stop it. The woman crossed the room on light steps and cupped Kadar's chin. She tilted his head up, looking down into his eyes. She held him with her gaze, pinning him to the stones. She spoke words he'd never heard before, words that hung in the air like whispered thunder. He had no idea what they meant, but a part of him understood them all the same. He felt the sullen heat in his guts recede, and the burning in his head quiet. He let out the breath he hadn't been aware he was holding, and a heat haze curled from his lips. The sorcerer nodded and smiled at him. It was the first smile anyone had given Kadar since Reap Night, when the fire had started bursting from his hands. Your gift burns hot, she said, the words appreciative. She glanced around the stone chamber, taking in the scoring left over generations of those who'd had to stay within the stone walls while they waited for a teacher to come for them. Kadar saw her gaze linger on the number of fresh scorches, and he flushed. He couldn't tell if he was proud or embarrassed. You'll need to learn to control it, however, or it will burn you out. Well, will you teach me how? Kadar asked. He knew, almost instinctively, that she could. The only question is whether he would be allowed to learn. She gave him another smile. This one was smaller, but just as warm. We shall see what you are capable of when the time comes, Kadar. I have no doubt that we will find a place for you, though. Kadar panted, sucking air into his burning lungs. The air was hot and thin, and it made his head spin. He closed his eyes, pressing his cheek to the stone floor. It was incongruously cool, and it helped stop the world from pitching and yawing behind his eyes. Again, Soria said through the grate in the wall. Kadar bristled, clenching his teeth. He had been in the black cell for weeks now, and he had done everything asked of him. The walls had glowed, and he'd unleashed everything he had until the fires had burned down to embers inside him. He slept, he ate, and he trained, but it never seemed enough. Again, Soria repeated, lowering the grate once more. Letting out a wordless cry, Kadar exploded in flames. They rose higher and higher, slamming against the ceiling and licking down the walls. The veins within the cell burned bright, sucking in the fire until there was nothing but a slightly charred smell on the air. Kadar collapsed bonelessly, shivering in every limb. Good, Soria said, the single word of praise more than she usually offered. You are almost ready now. Kadar wanted to believe her. He wanted to believe that soon Soria would open up that door and guide him out into the city where he could meet others like himself, where he could finally breathe the cool, open air and feel the sun on his face again.
As the light faded from the walls and he heard Soria's steps whisper down the hall, Kadar closed his eyes. He wanted to believe they'd let him out. He'd wanted to believe the promises were true. But deep down, he didn't. Not anymore.